The study that I presented uh, was a active psoriatic arthritis patient population that had been exposed and had inadequate response to conventional disease-modifying medicines such as methotrexate, but had not yet been exposed uh, to biologic medications. And in this population, we see b both at the three-month primary endpoint, but importantly, out to 12 months, patients were blinded to medication and dose of medication, uh, and it was an NRI analysis. So we saw both substantial uh, improvement at three months and at 12 months. Indeed, the first efficacy endpoint was at two weeks where we saw separation from placebo in the ACR response, which is a measure of joint response. But when you turn to not only joint responses, but also enthesitis, dactylitis, skin disease, uh, for example, function, all of those improved at the three month mark and then there was a climbing response out to 12 months with even better skin, dactylitis, enthesitis joint responses in the five milligram twice a day dose which caught up to the 10 milligram twice a day dose at the 12 month mark. Didn't quite perform quite as well at the three month mark. There was a comparator control arm of adalimumab. It, the study wasn't powered to claim non-inferiority or superiority to adalimumab, but what was reassuring was that the overall efficacy of both doses of tofacitinib was very similar to adalimumab in whichever domain we looked at, joints, theses, dactylitis, skin, and also when we looked at x-ray progression, there were uh, only about 5% of patients in the whole study that had any progression of x-rays and they were similar between adalimumab and tofacitinib. So I think the results are positive. This uh, gives us a, an idea that this oral medication, which inhibits several different pro-inflammatory cytokines, including interleukin-23, uh, will be efficacious uh, if approved in psoriatic arthritis. I should also mention that yesterday Professor Gladman presented data on a population of patients that had been previously exposed to TNF therapies and in that population as well tofacitinib showed very good responses. So I do know that in the United States we anticipate if things go well uh, with the FDA that uh, we may see this being approved in 2018. I, I'm afraid I don't know about the uh, European Union. Well, it's a great question. I really appreciate your asking it because uh, besides the obvious manifestations of disease, comorbidities such as obesity, hyperlipidemia, hypertension are important because there are increased levels in these patients as compared to normal individuals. But we also see some other problems like the problem called fatty liver, where in obese patients we see more fat in liver cells. So that's a reason why, because we have to watch liver function test in, with the use of tofacitinib, we have to be careful to monitor liver function test. So I would mention that as a safety aspect. Um, there were also some safety issues around infection, so we have to monitor for that. Fortunately, there was nothing new or different compared to what we've seen in rheumatoid arthritis. So this is a drug that at least, and uh, particularly in the US, we've had a long experience with it in the rheumatology community in rheumatoid arthritis treatment. So I think physicians are comfortable with it and will know how to monitor it. So what we've seen uh, this year and last year uh, is a growing number of uh, different mechanisms of action of different drugs to treat psoriatic arthritis. So for a, a more than a decade, the 
predominant treatment for the disease has been with methotrexate and with uh, TNF uh, inhibitors. So, and the TNF inhibitors have done a fantastic job in helping us achieve low disease activity or remission in many of our patients. But sometimes, either due to, for example, development of anti-drug antibodies and loss of efficacy from that, for that reason, or other reasons, or adverse effects. Patients may not respond to anti-TNFs adequately in the long run, or they may not even respond in the first place. So it's really important to have drugs available with different mechanisms of action to treat the disease. And what was fun about this session was every single uh, presentation was on a different drug and most of them were different mechanisms of action. So that's exciting. So we saw data on uh, an interleukin-12, 23 inhibitor. We saw data on a pure interleukin-23 inhibitor, gazelkamab. We saw data on two different IL-17A inhibitors, uh, both uh, secukinumab and ixikizumab. We saw data on a T-cell costimulary co-stimulatory blockade agent known as abatacept, which is, works in rheumatoid arthritis, and we saw data of efficacy for that. We saw data on another oral medication, a PDE4 inhibitor known as aprimolast. This is great. There are a lot of different options. So between oral subcutaneous options, uh, between different mechanisms of action, lots of choices coming up.